Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. That is my favorite time of the week to hear that jingle. It makes me so happy. <laughs> the real deal. I, you guys are the real deal. Oh, yes, we yeah. high production going on here. <laughs> We all have agents, and it's amazing. Yeah, true. I like to shuffle my papers as if I'm a news anchor. Sweet. I like it. Really professional. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, good morning, and welcome to Coffee Talk. We are your hosts, Southboro Youth and Family Services. Uh, I'm Sarah Castle. I'm the director of Southboro Youth and Family. And with me this morning, we have Megan Island, who's our assistant director. Shannon Kneiman, who's our program coordinator. And we are so excited. We've missed you. We haven't seen Sarah McNulty, who is um, one of the school adjustment counselors at Algonquin. We haven't seen her since yeah. before March or some, sometime like that. Um, for Actually, for Shannon, you probably haven't seen her since last fall. Last year, I think. Yeah. 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 So, so it's so nice to reconnect with you this morning on Zoom. Welcome. Thanks so much for coming on and cheers, everybody. And our uh, cheers. Talk. Thanks for having me. So, uh, as I always like to say, if you're not familiar with our show, um, we started this as a way to um, connect with one another during a time that we can't really be in person very much and um, we wanted to be able to share helpful information for uh, people in the community, introduce you to people in, in our community who live and work in um, Southboro and uh, the surrounding communities and as always we like to share a laugh if we can help it. Um, so um, we wanted to have Sarah on to talk about something in particular that's uh, stressful for many of us, which is um, schools reopening in the fall. It's been a, a particularly challenging time. So before we talk about any of that, um, Sarah, I know you and your family went whitewater rafting yes. this past week. We did. We were, we were preparing for the show. We said we need something fun to talk about. <laughs> um, and I said, well, I want to hear about your, your experience. How was it? So you had kind of prepared me. You were, you actually, you know, when we were originally talking on the phone, um, kind of set the tone for me. It was so great. We went, it's called Crab Apple. It is in Charlemont, I believe. And okay. Um, it was great. It was very, we didn't do anything. It was very tame. Um, <clears throat> we're probably ready for the next level, I think, maybe. I don't know. Um, right. we, had, <laughs> we had a great guide. He really engaged the kids and um, it was beautiful actually. And it was very peaceful. It wasn't, I was like thinking I was going to like fall out of the boat and, mm. uh, you know, so, but it was wonderful. It was perfect. Oh, oh good. Yep. Have Megan and Shannon, have either of you been whitewater rafting before? No, that involves no. nature. And <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of on the same page as you, Shannon. No. So <laughs> this this is like going as natural as you did. That involves yeah. nature. Yeah, and, and water. Usually, that's usually my my wavelength too. But um, it was actually really great. It was actually really great. Oh, that's funny. Well, I did, I did talk with Sarah. It's not as though I am an accomplished whitewater rafter by any means. Um, my family and I had gone once and I remember it very fondly and I remember um, it was very memorable because of how much fun it was. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did a really nice job and we were just looking for things to do in this crazy times and um, I would highly recommend it. It was great. That's great. That's great. Yeah. So that's a, a plug for you, Crab Apple. Crab company. Apple. Yeah. Yes. Our guide, our guide was Ryan. He's like third generation. All right, Ryan. If you're Crab watching, because I know we've got people in Charlemont, Massachusetts, okay. watching this show. Out, out to Charlemont. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, so Sarah, you are um, a school adjustment counselor at Algonquin. Uh -huh. For, we're very familiar because we work closely with, with you and with the school adjustment counselors at the different schools, but 
for our viewers who may not be fully aware of the scope of support that's offered at the school level, talk mm -hmm. to us a little bit about what you do. So <clears throat> I am one of four at Algonquin. I don't, I don't know how it works at the other schools um, as far as numbers, but I am a, you know, a mental health service provider, school-based obviously. Um, I work with kids who are on IEPs. Um, many times I'm working with students who have a 504 and then um, the sort of last year is obviously the general ed population also has access to us. Um, so yeah, I'm just a mental health professional in the school, you know, trying to uh, sort of intervene and coach so kids can, can be successful in the school building. Um, I also am the school adjustment counselor for, I don't know if you guys are as familiar because I feel like I probably haven't been talking about it much even, even in school, but the access program at, at Algonquin is a short term therapeutic program that's sort of um, formed over the years and we're able to support kids who have lots of absences for whatever reason. Um, maybe they've been hospitalized, mental health hospitalizations, maybe they have a concussion. Mm -hmm. um, it's sort of like individualized um, time and care for them to return to school as uh, that can be so daunting, right? You miss mm -hmm. You miss one week of school at Algonquin and you're right, right. You're feeling overwhelmed. So um, when the kids come back, if, if the access is a good fit, I also help them reintegrate. Um, there's a tutor, her name's Mary Ellen Wolf, and she and I kind of coexist hmm. in making sure the social, emotional, and academic piece um, come together and hopefully make that transition easier than it may, may have been without that. And that's been a really cool sort of side part of my job. I kind of have, I wear multiple hats, but. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So there are, um, we'll talk about this a little bit towards the end of the show, but there are, uh, so as Sarah mentioned, she is a school adjustment counselor um, on a team of four of you yes. at Algonquin. Um, we go into all of the schools within the Southboro district, and at mm -hmm. each of the schools, there are um, mental health providers. Um, part of the reason we had Sarah come on the show was because we, we wanted someone who wears that hat of being mm -hmm. a mental health provider um, who is school-based. Um, and Sarah, I know you were particularly active during the closures in um, the spring, reaching out to parents and offering um, support. Um, so we wanted to have today's show, our hope is to, to it's, it's challenging to revisit some of the um, strategies, uh, suggestions, words of wisdom that we can offer to families as students return to school in whatever capacity um, this fall. Um, we know that, I, I'd like to acknowledge the fact that the superintendent's office and the school committees were in, had a really, really tough job. Um, across, across the country, school districts mm -hmm. were really difficult position to try to yes. make decisions for their communities. Um, and no matter what the decision was, it was, it was going to create hardship for some families. It was going to create tension. It was, you know, so, um, so before we jump into our conversation, I, I had uh, recently read an email that came from Greg Martineau, who is the superintendent for Northboro and Southboro. And I just want to share a piece uh, from that recent email. He says, as an educator, making a recommendation to the school committees was one of the most challenging recommendations I've had to make professionally. With each opportunity for parents, guardians, faculty, and staff to provide their input, it is abundantly clear to me that there was no best model as no matter what decision or no matter what model was selected, there would be dissenting opinions about the decision. How do I balance this tension? 
for me, the guiding principle outlined in the district reopening plan prioritize the physical, social, and emotional well being of the school, community, students, and staff. And thinking about what is best for students remain the beacons for my work and for the work of the district. So I just wanted to highlight that because, again, um, we appreciate the, the challenges that families are faced with, and we want to recognize the challenges that um, the district had on their plate to try to make the best decisions and offer the best um, options for families in the community. Um, so I know ultimately the school committee voted for a standalone remote option for Northboro and Southboro families, as well as the phased reopening model. So uh, there's lots of different graphics that I looked at, but my understanding is that the phased reopening is going to start with uh, a remote model for everybody that turns into a hybrid model, sort of introducing the youngest grades first and the students with um, the highest level of need first, and then gradually uh, bringing back uh, other grades into a hybrid model, ultimately. So, um, Again, as we've already mentioned, families are finding themselves having to make some really difficult decisions and adjust um, no matter what decisions are made. Um, so I would love for us to spend the rest of our episode today just talking about, you know, in, in our work, um, we are talking with families quite a bit and supporting them in getting through these hard times. What kinds of things are you all saying to families? What suggestions do you have for people at a time like this? <laughs> Everybody jump in at work. <laughs> end, end of the show, we don't know what to do. <laughs> so for me as a school adjustment counsel, counselor and a parent, you know, when things shifted in March, um, <clears throat> I just sort of started, you know, I, I, I put all my parents on one email and it just, for me, you know, it really came from a genuine place for me trying to cope, right? Like yeah. I find myself home with my, my 13 year old, my eight year old, my husband work, is working from home. We have two dogs, we're all in this house. Like I was just on the search for things to remind myself of. Um, and then I ended up sharing sort of a weekly email to my, my caseload's parents. Um, whether or not it helped them, I, I don't know, but it certainly helped me. Um, it sounds so familiar, Sarah. <laughs> we're, half the stuff that we share is like, you know, behind the scenes, we're like, we're like this you know, is just yeah. it's helpful for, for us too. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, things for like, you know, obviously I think we've talked about like the basic self-care stuff. Um, mm -hmm you know, as, you know, routine sort of went out the window at, at one point over here, but you have to mm -hmm. bring that back in and hope that people are getting enough sleep and people are eating, trying to eat healthy and trying to exercise and mm -hmm. trying to, um, for me, you know, uh, turn all the, turn the screens off if you can. Um, we're kind of on them all day. And then, you know, if there's a way to take a moment away from it, um, and then, um, yeah, so that was sort of the start of it for me, just trying mm -hmm. to help parents and myself, for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, go ahead. Was somebody going to say something? I looked away from the screen for a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just going to say, yeah, the routines part of it. So I think that's especially a helpful reminder because we're coming off of summer but we're also coming off of a summer that we really needed, you know, for those that, for, for kids that had a break, the spring was really hard mm -hmm. and, and very stressful. And so parents may have been even more relaxed and been a little more forgiving, <laughs> 
over the summer, at least I experienced that in my house. Um, you know, sort of not knowing what the fall was going to be like. So, um, so Sarah, you talked about healthy habits, um, mm -hmm. about sleep and, um, and also taking breaks from the media yes. and um, trying to, so for many, you know, we're probably trying to get back into a routine. Yeah. Shannon, I know you guys, you guys have, what's your, what's your summer been like? Have you, have you found that to be the case where you are or? Yeah, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head that it's, it's so hard to have a routine to have a schedule um, because generally in the summertime we like to do lots of fun stuff there's a week that we go away and all of that fell through this year and so you know I've got kids that are in pajamas until somebody says you can't be in pajamas anymore you know what I mean and who brush teeth and <laughs> so yeah it's it's very you know, I, I think for people to be gentle with themselves because here we are, this is the work that we do and we think that we've got it all under control and, you know, I've, I've got a feral pack of children here at my house, <laughs> so, yeah. I remember yeah. saying at one point, I was like, my, my children look like they are cast in the Lord of the Flies. Mm -hmm. um, their hair is a mess. They're dirty. I don't know what they have on. <laughs> right. But, yep. I think for me too, in the beginning, um, I worried that because the schooling piece then became the parent uh, piece, right? It fell on the parents. I just, I remember posting something somewhere about like, just to remind yourself that, um, like everyone's mental health, at least for me, I don't, people might disagree with me, but is, is way more important than this sort of, I got nervous that there was going to be sort of this tension between the parent and the child trying to do homework. And mm -hmm. I think there was like, from what I could gather. And uh, mm -hmm. that made me nervous too. Just, uh, I just wanted to make sure people knew that it was okay. It's okay to like back off or maybe put the whole thing away. If, 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 if your house is turning into this like war zone, you know, like, mm -hmm. it's okay, like put it, put that away for now. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was something that in the beginning I was a little worried about and um, yeah. I'm hearing being kind to yourself, mm -hmm. the theme. Um, it's hard to know what to say on this episode. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. these are unprecedented times. So Nothing we offer is going to be, you know, a magic no. solution. Um, no. But I guess these are important reminders that you can find comfort in knowing that we're all in this together, even your child's teachers and your child's superintendent and, um, and uh, that it's okay. You don't have to... Um, be on i remember you know just personally we we were pulling off eight hour school days at my house with our our two and working full time mm -hmm. and i look back at that now and i feel like i have a little bit of ptsd you know sure. the prospect of trying to go back to that um understandably and you know i, I remember having a, a recent conversation at home and just saying you know we got to be okay with not doing that again. You know, it's, um, we're still going to support our kids and their education, but it was. <sighs> yeah. I think that the, the feeling of letting go is super important in that. And that echoes what you're saying, Sarah Castle, mm -hmm. that um, <laughs> there are two Sarahs here today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that we're not going to be able to control everything in our environment and mm -hmm. I always see it you know there's a lot of great graphics and that's how I see it in my mind that you know there's a, a small circle in the in the middle and then a bigger one out here and there are a lot of things that are in this bigger circle like um, your kid getting all of their assignments in 
uh, people wearing their masks or um, I don't know, I think there's so many. And those are things that we cannot control. So instead we have to focus on the things that we can control. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is that self care stuff that we talked about that's so important. And it, it's almost animalistic that we need sleep, we need good nutrition, we need exercise. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. right now, you know, some of that is that's okay if that's all that we can muster manage. Yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. That that's what's gonna get us through. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That goes back to what Sarah McNulty was saying, <laughs> Sarah M, um, about uh, self-care mm -hmm. being, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if you think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you got to take care of those things first mm -hmm. before you can achieve something more. Yeah. Um, right. So... And that will help ground you too. So if you're, you know, starting to feel overwhelmed, the anxiety is creeping up, um, that's going to help ground you back in and um, relieve some of that. Yeah. That's well, it's going to put on preemptive, preemptively sort of um, just, yeah, regulating your emotions, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's that window of tolerance thing that I share with the parents and mm -hmm. um, just knowing that that's already can be small for a lot of us, you know, work might be stressful, mm -hmm. finances, this, that, and the other thing. But like in a time like this, our window of tolerance shrinks so much. And, um, but if we're aware of it, at least we can sort of preemptively mm -hmm. make sure we know that, you know, I remember there was one day, uh, just trying to get my, he, he was seventh grade at the time, trying to just get him on a Zoom for whatever reason. It just turned into like this, <laughs> this crazy, stressful thing, you know, and after I was sort of reflecting on it, it was totally unnecessary, you know, for me to become so emotional about it. But um, yeah, I just think if we all just slow down, if it works, it works. If the technology fails, it fails. Um, mm -hmm. We have to move on from that moment. But yeah, the window of tolerance definitely shrink, has, shrinks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. When, under, when we're under that stress, this mm -hmm. sort of unprecedented time. Right. right. And no one knows, and again, why we don't have more things to say here on the show, mm -hmm. that you just have to be kind to yourself because we don't know this is new for all of us mm -hmm. how to behave and it's okay to not know right. it's okay to not know and not to get it right <laughs> yeah and I also think that we need to laugh I mean I know it's a serious obviously serious time but for me if anyone that knows me I mean I use so much humor to, mm -hmm. to deal um so I think that's important too you know try to try to find pockets of fun with yes. your kids when you can and yeah. Laugh at the absurdity of it all if you can. Yeah. I know some people are not are not feeling that and might not agree with me, but yeah. um yeah. I just think that helps too sometimes. Speaking of laughter, we were looking for an opportunity to share this. Um Shannon, can you share our oh, meme sure. that we were we were talking about earlier? <laughs> I think a lot of parents have probably seen this. <laughs> every teacher, this is also every parent right now. Yeah. That regardless of what our school systems show us, mm -hmm. give us to choose, and I think at, in Northboro, Southboro, and in the, the school system that my kids go to, you have the choice. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's even hard just to choose. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yes, I love that because yep. even even if the 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 choice or the decision is to go back to the way things were before all of this that's the face that we all make like oh, i don't know that sounds yeah. really scary <laughs> yeah and i would add too that academically um and you know please please if you want to send hate mail send it to shannon can i in care of south for youth and family services um that you know i think there's a lot i think Northboro Southboro is an amazing school system with amazing students and amazing parents. And 
to try to let go of the idea of academic success and is really hard and mm -hmm. that I think we really need to give our children some grace that if this year, you know, they're going to learn as much as they can, but if this year ends up being a wash, you know, say something, you know, that, that for some reason you couldn't, your child couldn't go to school for a whole year that had nothing to do with the pandemic, that the thought that they're not going to be able to catch up, we know that they're going to catch up. So, you know, we're all in the same boat and that, you know, they're going to do the best that they can and that it's all going to be okay in the future. Okay. It will be okay. Yeah. 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 Kids are very yeah. resilient and so are we. Right. And we have to give ourselves right. as much credit as we can. Yep. Well, yeah. I want it, to, it, um, it, oh, go ahead. Well, I was Before just going to say that whole, like holding the two things at the same time, like this is brutal. This is hard and we can do it. You know, what a beautiful dialectic, Sarah. That Thank you. Answer. That was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I think get that in there. That's great. No, it's very important. Yeah, yeah. both both are true. It's both not are gonna we're not going to use the word but. Both no are but. true at the same Only time. No buts. Only ands. <laughs> um, I want to take a, the last couple of minutes just to highlight, you know, again, because we could probably sit here all day. This episode could be a whole day long because, um, you know, how do we in 30 minutes talk about <laughs> how to support the mental health of not only your student who is returning to back to school who might be terrified um, or who, you know, um, is, is on some level traumatized. Um, how do we, <laughs> support parents who are going through a hard time and and how do we keep the wheels on the bus you know how do we keep the whole overall well-being of the family going um so we don't have enough time um in the world to even talk about all of those things but i'd love to highlight some additional resources that are available um so that if you feel and i'm you know of course we're biased um, you know, given the hats that we wear, but if you feel that you could use an extra support for your family, another adult who's on your team um, to help support your kids, to help you as a parent, to help you as a human being, um, there are resources available to you. So Sarah, I know you said you're in a team of four. At yep. There's four of us. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we're pretty, uh, I think, I think kids know we're there. We, mm -hmm. we definitely, we try, you know, mm -hmm. um, to make sure people know that our doors are open. Mm -hmm. um, yep. We have a great guidance staff as well. Right. And, uh, so right. we actually kind of have a lot of adults in the building that could be that extra person on your team, you know. That's right. Um, so, yeah. That's great. And I know that that's the case. Again, as we mentioned, we go into all of the Southboro public schools. I know this is true for Northboro also, that at every um, school, there is a school-based mental health. Um, I, I don't know if I want to go as far as calling it a department, but there's professionals in each of the buildings who provide mental health support and um, emotional support to students. Um, Megan, you've been very quiet on today's episode. Could you, would you mind telling viewers a little bit about youth and family, um, our department and what we can also, um, so we work very closely with the schools and sometimes mm -hmm. there might be a mental health provider working with a student and we're also involved. So do you wanna share a little bit about that? Sure, so similar to the schools, um, we also can provide a mental health support. Um, so we have a team of clinicians who can provide counseling um, in a variety of different ways. So that might look like individual support. We also offer a variety of groups. We can do um, some parenting support. We are in the process of putting together um, some different age groups um, 
for executive functioning skills groups. And so what those groups are gonna look like, they're gonna focus on skills like time management, organization, planning, um, motivation, things like that. So that's really timely in terms of trying to get back on track with school. So mm -hmm. if anyone is feeling like I need to get into the routine, get back into the swing of things for, mm -hmm. for school after having a couple months off, um, that might be the kind of group that could help you kind mm -hmm. of get back into, into getting um, into the swing of things for school. Um, so we are available for a variety of different things in terms of mental health support mm -hmm. in, the, in that. And we work with Southboro residents. I'll give a, a quick shout out to Northboro Family and Youth Services, who's our counterpart in Northboro. So um, because we're a regional school district um, or the high school is regionalized, um, we like to highlight them too so that, you know, if you're a Northboro resident and you need some support, please reach out to them also. Um, we're running short on time, but Shannon, can you can you share just really quickly some of the services you provide too, which I think are you know, also helpful for, for um, relieving stress and- Absolutely, yeah. right, because there are so many people that are facing um, lost jobs and things like that. So mm -hmm. we are a definite resource that people can reach out to. Um, we have, we work together with the food pantry and the senior center to provide um, an emergency fund. So if people need help with bills, um, please reach out to us and we can see if we can help you with that. Um, I can help people get uh, fuel assistance, um, transfer station waivers. Um, so there's a number of things. So I, I guess I would leave it at if you're struggling financially, reach out to us and see how we can help you or who I can, if it's not me, then who can we hook you up with? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wonderful. And, uh, Sarah, thank you again for coming on today and um, for, for contributing to our discussion about this. You're, you're an excellent resource for the community, for Algonquin. The students are so lucky to, oh, to have you as uh, um, a support to them. And um, I know we look forward to continuing to work with you this upcoming school year, as well as the other school adjustment counselors at Algonquin. Um, speaking of Algonquin, next week, which is, what's the date next week? That's the 25th. We have your new principal coming on. Oh, nice. Mr. Sean Bevan, yes. Yes. Good. So we are having Sean come cool. on. Um, we realize that many people, probably um, under normal circumstances would have an opportunity at, at Algonquin's open house to meet him yeah, yeah. and right. take his hand and you know all that stuff and and we're not shaking hands right now. No, <laughs> bumping <laughs> elbows maybe. Um, <laughs> so we, we asked Sean if he would come on because we want to meet him but we also thought that the members of the community would also like to, to know more about him, his background, have him tell a joke or sing a song on the show or something. Sure. Yeah. He's going to be watching this and like be like, what did I sign up for? <laughs> oh, um, funny. Yes. Yeah, when, when I, uh, I was an aide, as I, I've had many different hats in the district, but when I was an aide, a special education yeah. aide, he was an English teacher. So. Oh, okay. Oh. That's right. I had heard he, he, he originated yeah. here. Yep. So, awesome. Oh, cool. So that's he's not he's a stranger back. really to the school. So that's cool. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good to know. See, he's just a stranger. It's, it's going to be all for us. It's really going to be. <laughs> what you're going to witness on next week's episode is us getting to know Sean when everyone else is going to like it. <laughs> know him. Anyway. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, for coming thank on. You. And thank again, you for me. yeah, for viewers, if you need any uh, additional support, don't be a stranger. Yes. Um, we also offer referral support here. So even if you're not looking to participate in our services, we're happy to do the legwork of helping connect you with the resources you need. And I know that that's true for um, all of the, the staff that work at the schools also, that they will, yeah. they will do anything they can to support the students and their families. So. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Thank you so much for coming you, on. And Let's play our little jingle as we as we exit today and we'll see you all next time. Thank you so much.